All right, we have. We have done a re- bit of a rejig because of the events of yesterday. And I uh, spent a couple of weeks on the road during the Christmas holidays and I used Google Maps. I went to some places like the East Cape that I hadn't been for a long time. And the thing about my app on my phone, uh, when I'm using it for navigation, it tells me, it has a thing telling me what the speed limit is. Often that was out of whack because NZTA have been running around this country uh, rather than having one speed limit generally for a certain type of road, there are all sorts of speed limits now. 70s have gone to 60s, 50s have gone to 30s, and it is all part of a uh, waka kotahi, that's the New Zealand Transport Agency if you speak English. Um, it's a strategy called the road to zero. They think we can have no road deaths. And while people have been complaining about road deaths, if you look at the number of kilometres travelled, actually the road toll is falling. But more than perhaps the public safety, what is the impact and does this strategy of reducing uh, speed limits, is it actually going to do any good? Well, so, someone I think was asking some generally hard questions about this is a commercial property professional in the wire wrapper and my first boss in radio... Chris Collins, who joins us now. Chris, how are you? Good morning, Sean. Um, all right. Um, firstly, do you believe, Chris, that the strategy, and I know you're the sort of person... Oh, look, I firstly, actually, from your column, I want you to give me the background to your dad. Um, well, very briefly, in the 1960s, um, dad was the first person to fit seatbelts to a car in New Zealand and had done a fair bit of research about what their benefit could be. He went to the New Zealand uh, Minister of Transport, as it was then, and um, and suggested that seatbelts would make a difference to our road toll in New Zealand, which then was sitting at around 600 a year in a population of about 2.5 million. And, um, and he just met roadblock after roadblock. They had numerous arguments as to why seatbelts may not uh, be effective, that they could be more dangerous than, than this. I mean, this is just ridiculous thinking back. Um, but uh, he just persevered. And uh, finally, a chap by the name of Bernie Polishak, who was the Secretary of Transport, rang him one day and said, Trevor, you've convinced us. Um, I am going to back a law change. Um, and now Otago University and their public health degree actually run, they actually have a little section on the impact that private individuals can make on health policy in New Zealand with big with big repercussions, and they actually have some of Dad's correspondence as part of that part of that course. Well, what was your Dad's so, first name, Chris? Trevor. Trevor Gollins. So Trevor Gollins was the Ralph Nader of New Zealand. Uh, to some extent, yes. I mean, it was Dad used to get heartbroken when there were crashes of five or six people just flung out of cars through windscreens. What did he do for a job, Chris? He was an insurance. Ah, so that kind of exposed him to it? To some extent, Sean, yes. He was also uh, chairman of a thing called the Wellington Road Safety Association for, crikey, Vic, most of my, my, my uh, yeah. early years. Uh, okay, so but, you but are... You, yeah, so, look, and you can see the obvious benefits of seatbelts. No one would argue with that now. But we now have this new strategy from Waka Kotahi. Uh, road to zero, no road deaths, and they're saying, well, that's why we've now got these very variable, and I've got to say, I found it difficult. I covered a lot, uh, two weeks driving uh, uh, over the, the summer break. Um, really had to be so alert because the old rules about what you expected to be a 50 or 70 or 100k zone have all changed, um, seemingly in quite a random uh, manner. Firstly, do you agree with the fundamental argument from Waka Kotahi that if we get speeds down, we can reduce our road toll to zero? It's very hard not to... I mean, you know, this is is very political, Sean. It's very hard not to say, yes, okay, speed kills. But speed, inappropriate speed, kills. But also, a chap by the name of Peter Wright, who spent 30-odd years uh, as a training driver and and, uh, as a road policing uh, expert and he was a crash investigator. In his book, he actually has a chapter that says 
slow drivers are dangerous drivers and that makes a heck of a lot of sense as well but that's we're talking on the state highways i mean the speed reduction in some built-up areas makes a heck of a lot of sense mm. but on the highways reducing speed actually leads to less attention um less less awareness of of what's happening you're just not as switched on to mm. what's going around you and uh, we you know people just just uh, have accidents as a result of sort of um, inattention. Yeah. Well, the but column that drew my attention, you were talking about a particular um, speed change reduction on a particular uh, stretch of road. This is between Featherston, well, the north of Featherston, the state highway north of Featherston, uh, which has previously been between, what, uh, Greytown, uh, Marston, yeah. 100k area, and pretty straight uh, pretty safe road from from what I see. I know that you have commercial property dealings and, and development over there, and your columns seem to be arguing not only is this not any safer, it also damages literally the economic growth of a region. Well, it certainly does. It makes it it takes a lot longer for for freight to move through. It takes a lot longer for tradespeople, professionals, and what have you. There's a cost every minute in business has a cost somewhere someone's paying and i mean the contrast is the united states where they the states are not allowed to reduce the speed on the interstate highways so when they do roadworks they have to build alternative routes now we don't have that ability in new zealand fair enough but what we are seeing sean is that this is this whole campaign is not about reducing the the, the road toll it's it's an ideological anti-car anti-personal choice um, moved by some of the politicians, particularly the Greens. And what we are seeing is that bureaucrats are lying about the statistics to please their political masters. Now, I mean, how can we have zero road deaths when suicide is a big factor in deaths on the road? Now, New Zealand does not record the, the suicides in, in road in fatal crashes. But interestingly, Australia does. And Nick Leggett told me yesterday that 21% of truck accidents in Australia are suicides. Good we Lord. Can never have, we can never have a zero road toll while people still use their cars to kill themselves. And I guarantee the figure in New Zealand would surprise many people. Yeah. I mean, the, the NZTA or Waka Kotahi have talked about four road deaths on that stretch of highway that you mentioned in the last... 10 years or so. Now, um, it's well known that two of those were suicides. But you you make the point that they've dropped the speed from Featherston to Greytown to 80 k's an hour. But you get to Featherston and it's still 100 k's an hour over the Rimutaka range. Now, two of those suicides were on the Rimutakas. It's it's the, the absolute stupidity of what they're doing. But there are there are so many simple ways. If they want to reduce the road toll, then stop using chip seal. Chip seal is the most dangerous road surface there is. Stop using it. Use a decent bitumen road surface. Do you know that 65% of our corners on the state highway network actually fail the skid test that NZTA itself organises? So you're Have saying we can do more to build roads... God, the bitumen thing, we can't go there this morning. I haven't got time. No. Um, um, so it's really interesting. Yeah. And look, Chris, I'll tell you something else I have heard from rumour inside Waka Kotahi. There is also a feminist aspect to getting people to drive slower, that they think it is oh, blokes, look, it yeah. is mach macho blokes who, who drive fast and they want well, to change yesterday, that culture. Yeah. Yesterday I, I went to, uh, to a, a breakfast meeting on this topic in, in Greytown. I followed a vehicle from Marston to Carston. It was a woman driving. It was one of those little Suzuki's. They call them shopping baskets. They're deadly. And she was so busy talking to the person in front of her, doing 50 k's an hour, sticking to the speed limit and what have you. When she turned off, she forgot to indicate. And, you know, these are the sort of... It's all very well saying that, you know, it's speed, but it's, it's the other things. But one thing that would make a huge difference is compulsory headlights at all times. Let me just give you an example, Sean. In the 80s, I lobbied NZTA for compulsory day running lights. They said, oh, the ambient light, temp the ambient light is different here to the Northern Hemisphere. At that time, our road toll for 
injuries and deaths to children under 10 was 13 times Sweden's. Now, just rem- just think of that, say, a five-year-old kid, two days at school, running home to show mum the painting that he did today, gets to the footpath, looks right, is a car. How does he know whether it's stationary or moving? Because the lights are on. Car, <laughs> if the lights are on, his brain stops him before he even has to think. The brain says, hey, that car's moving. Yeah. But in New Zealand, 50% will have their lights on, 50% won't. And we've now got a far more dangerous situation because of the uncertainty than if we had compulsory day running lights. But when you see people driving in rain or low light with no lights on, you sort of think they're asking for it. They're yeah. dumb. Yeah. Um, Chris, the other thing is, uh, you mentioned, I think, back in your dad's day, 600 deaths a year with a population of 2.5 million. We look at, and I'm not sure what the road toll is for the last year. Do you have any, any idea? Uh, I think it was about 360 okay. or something. Uh, with but a population of 5 million and way more Ks travelled by car on state highways. So actually, our road toll, toll does continue to come down, doesn't it? Our, our cars are far safer. There's, there's no doubt about that. I mean, bear in mind, our road toll got to 800, I think, in about 1981. Um, but, you know, we still had cars like Hillman, hum, hum, you know, Humbers and um, what have you that basically, I mean, we still see it now. You, you read accidents and, you know, a person slumped in their car, found dead, person thrown out of their car, not wearing seatbelts will still kill you. But mm. our cars today have airbags and seatbelts and your chances are a heck of a lot better. Mm. So, Chris, what should Waka Kotahi do? What should perhaps a new government do about this? Do they need to revisit all these new... And, I, look, I, as I said, I really found it confusing. Often my GPS thing, the speed limit it said I should travel at, was different than the one I was on. It was crazy. Um, what should, well, they, should pay, they should pay more attention to the accident-promoting behaviours and the accident-promoting activity rather than simply saying speed kills yes speed does kill but there are many other things that that put people in the position where they're going to die and stupid kills too doesn't it well as ralph nader said unsafe at any speed but peter wright in his book the final chapter was the most important one it's two words keep left the number of vehicles that travel you know on the center line yeah and there's as, you know, when, you, when you're driving a car, where should you be? Your driver's seat should be in the middle of the left-hand lane. Yeah. Then you're at the left of the lane. But people people travel their wheels on the centre line. I mean, you know, these are the things that Waka Kotahi could be focusing on instead of reducing this, you know, 80 k's from Firth into Greytown um, and causing huge frustration and stupid passing. Um, this is, you know, this is the this is the result. Is we going we're going to see accidents because of the sheer frustration and the impatience that that will generate. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you, Chris. And look, and I tell you, by the text coming in, a whole lot of people agree with you. <laughs> I think we've hit on something here. Great. Uh, mate, hey, Sean, it's lovely to talk to you. Yeah, yeah, and thank you very much. I didn't know that and, about your dad. Um, what a campaigner. And congratulations on the way the platform's going. Brilliant. Yeah, we're having a lot of fun. Thank you, mate. That is Chris Gollins. Uh, well, he's a real estate agent, commercial property developer in the Wire Wrapper. And he's written a really good column about Waka Kotahi's look, obsession with reducing speed. And I think he made some hell of a good points there in that uh, interview. And the interesting thing, Chris's dad, Trevor, he's the guy who campaigned and got seatbelts made con- t- uh, compulsory in New Zealand. Um. And I bet you, amongst you guys, there is a stretch of road near you where the new speed limit is completely stupid. I'd love to hear you can text me through from around the country. Chris, talking particularly about that uh, stretch over in the wire wrapper. Um, And also, don't forget, I want to hear from you, and I'd love some calls from you during the course of the morning. If you were at that protest a year ago at Parliament, and you look at the world and the political landscape as it is now, are you proud? Are you ashamed? Or are you still confused?